Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com and today we're gonna create this Ooh, how do I describe it? It's like the Instagram sports edit inspired effect here in Photoshop. Uh, if you've used Instagram and you bump into sports on Instagram, I'm sure you've seen this style of edit before. It's like a very heavily sharpened, high impact uh, type effect. We're gonna maybe tone it back a little bit from that and try to add a little more, dare I say, professionalism. I mean, there are some accounts that do a really nice job, so I don't wanna smear an entire uh, niche of artwork on Instagram. Uh, but we're gonna do kind of our take on that high impact athlete style effect because there are some there's some really cool uh, bits of artwork that are done. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to do that in Photoshop today. If you do enjoy this tutorial, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can check out all the Photoshop tutorials that have gone before. And of course, you will be notified and be able to see in your subscription box all of the Photoshop and photography and graphic design related tutorials that come in the future. If you subscribe, thanks so much. But uh, hey, let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial and check this thing out. Alrighty, so here in Photoshop, we can see a copy of the finished effect here. We're going to be trying to get something kind of similar to this. So let's jump over to our .tiff file here, and we've got Messi. And I do have to say, I'm from America. We call this sport soccer, but I'm fully aware that the rest of the world calls it football. And it does kind of make sense. I mean, you're kicking a ball with your foot, whereas the American football is something you throw and you catch and, and all of that. So I, you know, uh, I, I tend to think that you, you're probably right if you are somebody who calls this sport football, because after all, it's a ball and you use your foot. Uh, so I'm not going to, no argument from me when it comes to that. All right. The first thing we want to do is isolate Messi as much as we can here. We're going to use our quick selection tool. That's this little brush with the selection and, uh, you know, whatever. We're going to sample all layers. We're going to have auto enhance ticked on and we're just going to paint the selection over him. And what I will also do, I'm speeding the video up, by the way, if you're watching and wondering why it's going so quickly, uh, not only will I be creating the selection of Messi, uh, but I will also be using the select and mask option, which you can just get to uh, by choosing your select menu and then choosing select and mask from that. We're going to use select the mask and just kind of clean up the edges a little bit where they need to be cleaned up. The the selection doesn't need to be a hundred, you know, it doesn't need to be a hundred thousand percent perfect. It just needs to be kind of good enough. So that's that's really what my goal is here. Um, of course, you can spend as much or as little time on the selection as you like. I want you to think you got a good mask here in select a mask. One of the important things here that I want to point out is I'm going to output this not to a selection, but I'm going to do an entirely new layer with layer mask. So I'm going to choose that. And I'll probably also just crank up my edge detection to like four or so and see what that does. Might just help things out around the edge, maybe smooth the edges a little bit as well. That's a kind of a global, every edge of your uh, selection will get that. So I'm going to pop that up to about 20, 21, whatever. I'm going to hit OK here and let's see what we've got. I think that'll work. Like I said, the selection doesn't have to be perfect. It just kind of has to be good enough. Now, before we go any further, let's come up here to image and choose image size. And I'm just going to knock this down so the width of the image is 2,500 pixels. We're going to end up making this a perfect square, and the square will be 2,500 by 2,500. We'll use the crop tool to make it a square, but for now, let's just set our width to 2,500. Um, just it'll knock it down in size a little bit, make, make Photoshop a tiny bit faster when we're working with it. All right, so let's drop a color in here behind the masked version of them. So you can see we got the masked version of them up here on a new layer. So select the background layer, and then come down here and choose the little half black half white circle. We're going to choose the solid color layer. And what we'll do is we will use the sampler tool and we'll just sample kind of like a medium blue here on his his shirt. So I'm going to go with maybe a blue like that. Okay. That's our background. You can see up here around his hair is not perfect, but again, I don't think it's going to affect what we're going to do with this. I think the selection is fine. I don't see anything that's crazy. Maybe right there next to his arm could be cleaned up a little bit. Right, he's that little bit that's up there and maybe up there between the fingers. So we can click directly on the layer mask. We can use our brush tool, which is right there. And then just use our square bracket keys to make the brush a little bit smaller and just paint with your foreground color set to black. You see right over here, foreground color set to black. And we can just, you know, wipe away any of that junk that's that we know is probably going to be a little distracting you just come in there and just dust that stuff away so i'll get rid of that and then i'll paint with white and i'll make sure the rest of his jersey is still showing there and you could, you know, around the edges, you could go and clean up a little bit more. If you're enjoying what you're seeing so far in this tutorial, consider supporting the channel and picking up a copy of my Photoshop course. There's a link that'll appear, you know, right up there in that corner somewhere. But there's also a link down in the bio. It's just kind of like an intermediate to advanced uh, Photoshop course. If you're a graphic designer uh, or a designer or just general Photoshop user, you're going to find a lot of stuff in this course that you really like. And it's like seven, eight, or maybe even nine hours long, if I recall correctly. I think you'll really like it. I think it's great value. And... Most importantly, it supports this channel, helps me keep doing what I'm doing here on the channel, and bring in some heat 
when it comes to these tutorials. Thank you guys so much. Let's get back to this video. And what I wanna do is I wanna turn the background layer back on because we're gonna select this color fill layer and we're gonna set it to the color blend mode. You're gonna see what this is gonna do. It's gonna kinda, well, make the background behind him very blue, right? There's without that blue solid color and there it is. We've isolated him. We're starting to make the background pretty blue, so that's cool. Let's add another adjustment layer here. I'm gonna double click on my adjustments panel to open and I'm gonna choose this photo filter and I'm gonna double click here on the color thumbnail and the color that I wanna add here is 23 1F59. Uh, so you can see it's a very dark blue. And what I'll do is I'm going to crank the intensity to 100%. You can see here I have preserve luminosity checked off. And I'm going to set this to a blend mode of multiply. It's going to really darken the background. And then I'm probably just going to reduce the opacity. I'll set it to like 50% for now. We'll see what that looks like. So we're kind of darkening up the background as you see. And what I'm gonna do here before we go any further is crop this to a square. So I'm gonna grab my crop tool. Up here in the ratio dropdown, I'm gonna choose one to one or square ratio. And I'm going to just make sure I drag all the way, maybe kinda, kinda right around there. I don't wanna cut exactly at his knees. It's always kind of a bad idea to cut right on a joint of somebody when you are uh, cropping an image. And we've got a little bit of headspace up here as well. So that probably works. So I'm gonna commit that change. And now if I go up here to image, image size, you'll see that our image is 2,500 by 2,500. And you know, Instagram loves the square image. So that's what we're rolling with here. Now I'm gonna select the background image again. It's layer zero here. And we're gonna drag in a copy of the stadium. So I've got this stadium shot here. I believe this is, uh, this is the home stadium for good old Barcelona. I'm going to drag it in here. It's not quite big enough, but you can see here, because we had the background layer selected, it placed it beneath our blue and our uh, photo filter adjustment layers. That's great. We're going to select the stadium, and we're going to go edit, free transform, and I'm going to scale this up, holding down shift and alt. That'd be shift and option on the Mac. We're going to scale this up just until it's kind of like that. You can choose whatever part of the stadium you like. Maybe we'll go to one of the sides here or something. Uh... I kind of want to hide the groups of people behind him as much as possible. I'll probably go with something right about there. We'll commit that change. And we can name this layer, you know, stadium or pitch or whatever you want to name it. That's great. And we'll come up here on top of all this stuff, on top of the photo filter. And I'm going to add a channel mixer because I think I want to make the background a little bit darker, uh, but also desaturated a little bit. So we'll tick on monochrome here. And in order to increase the contrast, we'll, we'll boost the blue channel a little bit. You can see how it's kind of lightening things up. And then we're going to set this to multiply. And I think for now, we'll leave it at 100% opacity. As we work our way through this, we can adjust opacity and fill opacity, whatever needs to be adjusted to get our, our the lightness levels between foreground and background just right. Next, I think I want to add kind of a striped uh, effect to this background to kind of match the striping on the jersey. So what we'll do, once again, jump back in here to image size, and we'll divide our width here, 2,500 by 10, which would be 250, okay? What we'll do now is we will grab our rectangle tool, and right now you can see the fill is just solid black. I'm creating a shape layer. I'm going to click a single time, and I'm going to set the width to 250 and set the height to, well, remember, it's 2,500 pixels tall in our image, but I'm going to go with like 3,000 thousand high just so it very easily covers right and you can see we're we're behind Messi at this point that's great and up here under view I have snapping turned on so if I look here it's gonna snap to the document bounds so as I drag this close to the edge it just snaps right into place and what I'll do is I'll grab my eyedropper tool where is it right there and I'll once again sample some of the blue just off of his jersey and with this layer selected you can see here in the layers panel I've got that rectangle selected hit Option delete, that will be alt backspace on the PC to fill that rectangle with that blue that we sampled. Now what we'll do, we'll grab our move tool and we'll duplicate the shape by holding down the alt or option key and just drag the shape straight over toward the right and then just adjust it and it'll snap into place. And you can see now we have two rectangles and they're just clicked right into each other. But we need this next rectangle to be a red. So once again, grab the eyedropper tool, sample one of the, the reds from the jersey Option delete or alt backspace to fill that. Now that we have these two uh, square, uh, these two uh, rectangles side by side, what we can do is we can just grab both layers by selecting the top layer, hold down shift, select the bottom layer, hold down alter option, and just drag copies of these two layers out. I'm just holding alter option using my move tool, and we just duplicate these layers all the way across our image just like that. And now we have all these rectangles in our layers panel that we duplicated. Select the top rectangle. Hold down shift, select the bottom rectangle. And what we'll do is we'll just convert these to a smart object. So right click, convert to smart object. It's going to group them into one layer like that. And we can call this stripes, even though that's pretty obvious from the old layer thumbnail. Let's set this layer to the blend mode. Uh, let's try overlay. And you can see we get kind of this cool effect. That's, that's neat. Maybe color will work better. 
Ooh, color's pretty nice. Yeah, I think I'll roll with color in this case. Uh, but you can really, you know, play with anything you want. Maybe screen would look cool, depending on the effect you're going for. You can really try a lot of different things here. Whoop, wrong one. Let's go to color. And now let's add a little bit of like an outer glow around him. So I'm going to select him and I'm going to hit Command or Control J to duplicate him. And I'm going to right click on that layer, convert this to a smart object. And what we'll do is we'll call this messy blur. And I'm going to go filter. I'm going to go blur. I'm going to go motion blur. And a distance of 800 might be a little extreme. Let's knock it back to like 650, something like that. I'll, I'll hit OK. And what we'll do is we will set this layer to the blend mode of color dodge. So it's like a very intense brightening type effect. Uh, but we really don't want that on top of him. So I'm going to drag this down beneath Messy. So you can see there's before, there's after. We're adding kind of this glow. And if we want to intensify the glow, just hit Command or Control J to duplicate that messy blur layer. And you can see we're just adding a, a, a glow that you hardly even notice as a glow. But it's just helping set him off of the background a little bit more. All right, now let's see about kind of blending some of these colors together. Let's select the messy layer right here. In fact, I'm going to name this layer messy so it's, so it's not named background. Let's add a curves adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the black point. So I'm going to drag it straight up just like that. And then I'm going to grab the white point. I'm going to drag it straight down. So we're just kind of getting rid of some of the contrast. But I think overall I want to brighten everything up a little bit. So I'll also drag just kind of a, a center but favoring up near the top of the curve line. Drag that upward a little bit. You can see there's before, there's after. And we've brightened it and reduced the contrast. I'm doing that because I'm going to add more contrast here because I'm going to add a gradient map adjustment layer. And what I'll do is I will select my gradient stripe and we're going to edit this gradient a little bit. I'm going to double click here or just uh, double click right there, excuse me, to choose the color stop that's going to be mapped to all the darkest pixels. And I'm going to change the hex code right here. I'm going to change it to, I've got this written down here, 0E2647. So you can see it's kind of a reasonably dark-ish, but quite saturated blue. And then for the color to be mapped to the brights, we're going to go with a, an FA151B. A so it's more of a red, again, kind of playing off that red-blue uh, color that you've got going on in his jersey. And then we're going to set this to the blend mode of soft light. So again, you can see before and after, we're just kind of pulling things together. And this gradient map obviously darkened and introduced more contrast. So that's why we added this curves adjustment layer uh, beneath it to kind of counteract what we knew the gradient map was going to do. But we still want the coloring from the gradient map. And now to help Messi stick out a little bit more, what we'll do is we'll load this mask as a selection right down here. So we'll command or control click on it. We'll add another curves adjustment layer and you can see we automatically get that mask attached to the curves and we'll just boost the brightness of Messi overall. So something like that. Maybe we can pull down on the shadows a little bit to introduce a little contrast just to his person. There we go. I think that'll work. And at this point, I think the color in the background might be a little, it, it, it's kind of competing for the spotlight a little bit too much, right? So we can come back down here to our stripes layer and we can either reduce the opacity of this a little bit, right? Kind of make that a little bit more muted. Remember, we're still going to be showing through the blue background behind it. And if you don't like how the red is kind of being converted to more of a wine color, we could crank the opacity back to 100 and we could try going with like an over lay or something like that just to just to help it maybe not quite compete with you know him in the foreground quite as much I think I like that maybe more setting the stripes to overlay instead of uh, color and now let's create some lens flares here to add some visual interest to him uh, let's create a new layer here and I'm gonna name this flare and we'll grab our brush tool. We could do this with either a flare brush. You can go to a site like brusheasy.com and, and download all kinds of cool flare brushes. And I've got some here, so I think maybe I'll use one of these. Uh, I will go with, I'll go with this brush right here, I think. And I want to set my foreground color to white. And if I just click once, you can see I add this giant flare. So I'm going to maybe add this up here near his hair, something like that. And maybe another one up here in the top corner where we've got uh, where we've got those lights. But what I'll do is I'll make it a little bit smaller up there. So I'm using my square brackets to just size that down a little bit. And now we can duplicate this flare layer, Command or Control J. It intensifies it, yes. But we're going to select the bottom flare layer. And we're going to go image adjustments, hue saturation. And what I'll do is I'll tick on colorize. And because this is white, we want to slide the lightness down to maybe like negative 50, negative 60, and crank the saturation through the roof. Now our underlying color is red. I think I want it to be more like blue. So I'll come over here to the blues. And you can make it a little bit darker even if you want, maybe a little bit brighter. There we go. That's a really bright blue. So negative 50 works great. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to set this layer. You can see how intensely blue they are. If I shut off the top flare, there you go, super duper blue. We're going to set this to screen. And then what I'll do is I'll select the top flare here and we'll set this to linear dodge add and a little side trick that I don't know if I've ever showed this in any of my tutorials. You can come up here to layer and go layer style, blending options. And if we shut off this transparency shapes layer, 
uncheck that, what we get, especially when we're using linear dodge add, is a highlight that behaves much more like a real light in a photo. See how it's like, you know, just lighting up his hair as if it was actually a light that's back there. And then what we do to tone this down a little bit is reduce fill opacity, not regular opacity on the linear dodge layer. So we're going to reduce fill opacity a little bit, and that's going to help it kind of, it just, it just works, man. I don't know. And then we'll reduce the overall opacity just a little bit of the screened flare beneath it. So you can see before those flares, after those flares. It's just really helping light up the top part of the scene, and that's just the way that I like it. Let's go ahead and add another gradient map here. So I'm going to select the top flare layer, add a gradient map on top of everything, select that gradient stripe, select the darker color stop here or the color that's going to be mapped to the darker bits of the image. And let's go 003177. So again, we're going with a nice dark blue. We might make it even a little bit darker than that uh, in just a moment. And I'm going to double click over here on the lighters and I'm going to go uh, E9. 6265. So just a little bit more of a pale red like that. You can see here, there's our gradient. I'm going to hit OK. And let's set this, let's try soft light for this and see what that looks like. So you can see there's before, there's after. That kind of that makes it pretty rich. I kind of like what that's doing here to what we've got, what we've got going on. And I think we'll add a selective color adjustment layer on top of this as well. So there's selective color. I'm gonna from the colors just choose my neutrals here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the cyan to negative 20. That's gonna introduce red because red is the opposite of cyan. I'm gonna set my magenta to plus 15. Magenta is magenta. And then yellow here I'm gonna set to negative negative 20 uh, because the opposite of yellow is blue. And what I'll also do is just set the blacks here to like minus 15, minus 17 ish. I think that looks pretty good. And here comes the sharpening or the over sharpening uh, part of this process. We're going to merge all layers to one new layer. Command shift option E, that would be control shift alt E on the PC. You can see everything has popped up onto a new layer here. We're going to desaturate it by going image adjustments, desaturate. And I will go filter, other, high pass. And we want to do a, a heavy high pass. So something like 15, this will actually be perfect to the point where you can really make out the details and everything. Go ahead and hit OK. And then we'll set this to the blend mode of like overlay. Overlay works. Soft light also works. But you can see how strong that is, the overlay. So I might go with something like soft light. And you could even after you go soft light, you could reduce the opacity a little bit if you wanted to. Or if that's not enough for your taste, hit Command or Control J to add, you know, duplicate that layer and just further intensify that effect. Uh, that's a little bit too much for my liking. So I'm going to delete that. And what we need to do now is kind of darken up the bottom of the scene so his legs and the foreground all kind of blend together a little better. Grab the uh, the eyedropper tool here and sample one of the darkest blues you can find on his jersey. So I'm going to go with like a very, very dark blue right on the edge of like the shadow. So you can see it's a super dark navy bluish purple color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a gradient fill layer. So we'll go layer, new fill layer, gradient fill, and I'm going to hit OK. And what we want is we want the foreground transparent gradient right there. And this may be up near the top corner for you, but because I've messed up my default gradients, mine's down here. Uh, but we want the foreground to, to, to transparent. And then you can just drag the color up or down until it kind of blends the bottom of his legs with the scene a little bit. And you can see the gradient is kind of, it's affecting way up here past like his chest. We don't quite want that. So I'm going to select my gradient stripe and I'm going to drag the transparency handle up here. And I'm just going to like push the color back down. So it's kind of limited to the bottom part of the frame a little bit more. You see how that's doing that and just opening up the top of our image. So this gradient's not really affecting it too much. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to hit OK again. You can see there's before and there's after. So we've kind of created this little, you know, kind of like faded zone near the bottom of the image. And I think what we'll do now is just add some text to this. So let's grab our text tool and I've got Futura. I think I'm going to roll with Futura. You can choose a size. I'm going with six points here, but if six point is too small, um, I'll change that. I'm going to hit the letter D to reset my foreground and background color. And then I'm going to just flip my foreground and background. So you can see here, I'm, I'm going to be typing in the color white. That way I can just see it over this dark background. So I'm going to type in all caps, messy. There we go. I'm going to commit that change. All right. So six points is a bit too small. I'm going to open up my character panel. Let's crank this up to like 18, maybe, uh, maybe 20. Yeah, that looks good. And then here for the tracking, this see this VA and the, the side to side arrow. We're going to set that to 2500. We want this to be, you know, very wide. And then here in the paragraph panel, I'm going to make sure that it's center aligned. I'm doing that because what I'm going to do next is go select and select all grab my move tool here and just make sure I align this right here to the center of our document, just like that. Perfectly aligned to the center. We can go select to deselect. And now with our text, what we can do is we can add a little gradient to it, add a little drop shadow, you know, give it a little finesse and we'll have a nice looking poster here. So let's go uh, layer 
new layer style, and we will go, first let's go with our drop shadow. So choose drop shadow. I'm gonna go with a very strong, very subtle drop shadow. This is perfect. Blend mode of normal, the color black, opacity 100%. This is important here. An angle of 120 degrees, and then a distance of six, and a size of three pixels, and you can see it's just this nice little just pop of a drop shadow. Barely noticeable if you're not looking for it. I really like it. Hey, if you're on Instagram and you have followed this tutorial and gotten to this point, well, make sure you, number one, follow me. My my handle or my username is at Tutvid, but also I would love it if you upload your creation to Instagram, since this, this is, after all, Instagram-inspired artwork. Upload it to Instagram and tag me in the image. You don't need to give me some elaborate shout out. I mean, if you do, hey, that's cool. Uh, but it's particularly useful if you tag me in the image because then it shows up in my tagged pictures and I like to go through my tagged images. I, you know, like and comment and see what you guys are making. Um, and it's always a whole bunch of fun to see what you can do with the tutorial that you're watching right now. Let's get back and finish this thing up now. And I think what we'll also do here is double click on the FX icon again. Let's let's do add a gradient overlay to this. So we'll go gradient overlay. Oh, I kind of like that. I don't know if the blue is quite right. Let's drag the white all the way back over here. That's a little bit too intense. I'm going to double click here on the blue color stop. And I'm going to try to sample here from a, a relatively dark blue, but I still want it to stick out in front of the uh, in front of the background. Maybe I'll sample a blue off of his jersey, something like that. And then I'll grab this center point here and I'll just pull this toward the blue to kind of just push the bluish colors down near the bottom of the text and force that to force that to kind of fade its way back up to the white near the top of the text. And I'll hit OK. I'll hit OK again. So that's cool. We've got what we've got there. And overall, I'm looking at it and maybe there's just uh, the, the, the blacks are a little bit too intense for the image. So I'll add another selective color adjustment layer on top of everything. Go to colors, go to blacks and just remove some of the black from the darkest parts of your image, from the blacks of the image. So I'm gonna select this here in the text input field and just use my down arrow key. One, two, three, four, five, maybe I'll go negative six, right? And you can see here if I shut that off, it just gives us like this overall fade that I think is kind of neat. And at this point we can add a few more flares. So I can just add a new layer, the new layer icon right down there on the bottom of the, the layers panel. I can name this layer flares and uh, we can grab the brush tool. I can right click. I can choose whatever, whatever kind of flare I really want. And uh, I can just go ahead and add a couple additional flares here. In fact, I think I'm going to sample a blue off the background here. So I'm holding down my Alter Option key. I'm going to grab like a, a blue like that, kind of a medium-ish blue. And what's going to happen here, and actually I should do this before I, before I point this out. Um, well, I'll select the flares layer, and I'm going to set this to color dodge right off the bat. And what I can do is now when I click around in the image, you can see how it just it gives me this like lit up effect, right, wherever I paint this flare. So we're kind of almost light painting. Uh, but it adds a really, really neat effect. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose a different brush here. I'm going to go with something kind of flatter. And what I'll do is I'll use my square bracket keys to size this way down. And what we'll do is click a few times to add a couple flares near my text, kind of like that. You can see it's a subtle flare, but it's something that's just going to be popping through there. And you can see here, if we take a look, we've added a lot of flares, but it just looks like we've lit up and kind of painted in parts of our image. It really adds a lot of depth and just, you know, add, add I don't know, just makes the image look a little bit better, I think at least. So the last overall effect is just going to be working some texture into this. Here's how we're going to do that. We're going to add a new layer here. We're going to call this layer grain. And then what I'm going to do is go edit, fill, and I'm going to fill this with the contents of 50% gray. You can choose from the drop-down menu, contents 50% gray, and I'm going to hit OK. Now what I'll do is on this grain layer, go filter, camera raw filter. It's going to take this one single gray layer out to the camera raw editor, where we'll come over here and we'll choose the effects tab, and I'm going to add a bunch of grain. So I'm going to go like grain, I'm going to make the size bigger, and I'm going to make it pretty rough as well. So you can see there's the grain we're going to add. I'm going to hit OK. There's our grain, cool. I'm going to set this to like soft light, and then we'll zoom in here to 100%. And you can see our grain has, it, it's kind of added a lot of mess to the image, but it really helps the foreground and background blend a little more. That being said, there's a little bit too much grain, so we can control it using the opacity slider. So I'm just going to slide this back to like, you know, between 40, 50% opacity, and maybe right around 50 works pretty well for this image. And I'm going to zoom out just a touch here. Uh, what I, well, the last thing I'll do is add two textures, and these are textures. I bought these textures, but if you can find some good textures around online, there's all kinds of free texture websites. I've got a dust and scratches texture. We'll drag that in and that looks pretty good. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, well, you know what? No, I want this to be pretty small. So I'm going to leave that like that. And you can see all the dust and scratches texture are white. So I'm going to drop away every black or dark pixel in this layer by setting it to the blend mode of screen. And you're going to see here, it's going to just give us this kind of like grungy, messy look, no pun intended. 
And uh, last but not least, we'll drag this paper poster texture in. And I like this because it almost obviously looks like a folded poster. I'm gonna hold down Shift and Option, that's Shift and Alt on the PC, make that texture a little bit larger. Now, right now, this texture, I, I wanna save all the dark stuff, but the problem is creases don't usually look dark. So, like, I would set this to the blend mode of multiply to drop away all the light stuff, but you can see, I don't know, I just don't like it when the creases are black. So I'm gonna set this layer back to the blend mode of normal and I need to invert the layer. I can do this despite the fact that it's a smart object by going image adjustments and just choose to invert it. It's gonna make my creases white, that's great. And now I can set this to the blend mode of screen, thereby dropping away all the dark stuff. Now this obviously is just, the texture's way, way too heavy. So let's uh, reduce the opacity here, knock it down to, oh, I don't know, 30% or so. And you can see we have this kind of crazy, uh, crazy texturized version of uh, the image. And maybe this, this paper poster texture is adding a lot of like low contrast ness to the shadows. So maybe we could even try shutting off our selective color adjustment layer. You can see how that just adds all that contrast back in. I really I think I like that a lot more. So I think we'll roll with that. And in fact, I may even want to intensify the contrast a little bit and throw a levels adjustment on top of everything, boost the blacks a little bit, maybe darken the overall uh, do darken the overall poster just a little bit. You can see there's before and there is after. So yeah, there you go. We kind of sped through it a little bit, but it still took, you can see, uh, a little bit of time to kind of mow through all these different techniques. But those are some of the best techniques, at least in my opinion, to getting in there and creating this style poster. And you might not want to do something that is like crazy over the top contrasty, or you might not need to add the grain or the, the texturing that I did at the end. But the point is, if you know all the techniques, you know which ones to take and use for your particular project, your particular poster, or that graphic that you would like to create. Um, if you have created this, like I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, make sure you follow me on Instagram and I would love for you to upload what you've done and tag me in it so I can check it out. That's always a lot of fun to see. And I try to, like I said, like and comment and interact with you guys uh, on those posts. Uh, but yeah, for working with adjustment layers and textures and solid color layers and a really quick, super fast breeze through select the mask and everything else that went into this tutorial, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.